Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. For those of you who are new and don't know me, my name is Rupi. I am a lover of eyeshadow, blush, and all things makeup and I'm just here to share that with you. And so I am here today with another MAC video. Yeah, I think this is my second one this week, but like the third one in maybe like a span of a month. Anyways, I feel like I've been on a MAC kick lately. Their last few collections have been really intriguing. Um, my favorite thing so far has been the Tempting Fate Feast Your Eyes palette. And now they came out with their holiday 2021 collection with like a ton of stuff. A lot of which looked really, really amazing, but I decided to stick to just one thing. And that was their holiday mega palette that comes with this interesting little spinner detail. This is the size of the prize eyeshadow palette, comes with 25 eyeshadows. It's big, <laughs> it is big. So it does fold over, you get a mirror. I like that it's foldable. Um, storage of this thing is gonna be really annoying because I know that with my uh, Urban Decay Elements palette is also the issue but it basically looks like an artist's palette. Now, the shadows in this palette are quite small, and I will show you in comparison to my Botanic Panic, if I can just get it open. So there are the shadows in the Botanic Panic, and here's the ones in the new palette. So these are like about a regular 26 millimeter pen, these are probably the size of a nickel or a dime. So they're very, very, very tiny, um, like very tiny. Like if I put my finger next to it, you can kind of tell. I don't know. Anyways, they're very small, uh, which is, it, it's fine because, I mean, how much shadow do we really need? However, <laughs> this beast was 99 Canadian dollars or 75 US dollars. So it is super expensive. And I just want to know, is this worth it? Is this a great formula? What what What's the rage about this palette particularly? And I kind of wanted to do that with you guys on camera. So this is going to be a completely first impressions type of video. I haven't even swatched these yet and I'm probably just going to insert swatches on my arm just over um, because I cannot tell what the names of these shadows are or what uh, formula they are. I can kind of tell what the um, the dazzle shadows are because there are dazzle shadows in here. Uh, there's matte formula, there's the frost formula, you get satin formula. I think it's satin. I don't think that means shimmer. I think it means satin. And there's also two of the Velux pearls, which if you guys remember from this video, I still don't understand what the hell a Velux pearl is because it's, I would assume a Velux pearl means something really sparkly and shiny, but it's not. The dazzle shadows for sure are a little bit more sparkly. Um, all of the shadows except for the dazzle shadows are made in the USA. The uh, dazzle shadows are actually made in Canada. So woo woo proud moment for Canada um, and the entire palette was assembled in Canada a lot of max stuff usually is made in Canada I think the um, tempting fate palette was actually made in Italy so that was really cool to see that they have an Italian formula in, among their palettes because we know we love Italy formulas you know so we're gonna dip right into this let's just you know get right into it try it on our eyes I've already primed my eyeballs with um, the Smashbox primer um, we're gonna go ahead and play with some of these colors and see what all the rage is about is Mac actually making a comeback or are we seeing some duds versus some hits uh, among their recent collections I mean, I gotta say, they are really trying because they came out with these and they have like five single duochromes. I almost bought one of the duochromes, but honestly, I don't really need it. So I just stuck my guns to the palette so that I could try a variety of the shadows for you guys and let you know what, how they are. So let's just jump right in.
All right, so I've zoomed you guys in. We're gonna go ahead and start with this. I am just looking for a brush. There's some towel here to clean off my brushes every now and then. So I'm gonna start with a BK202. I'm probably not gonna tell you every single brush that I'm using, you guys, but I mean, we're gonna do kind of a colorful look. I think I wanna dip into this purple first. So I'm gonna go into that purple, which is kind of the brighter one. And I'm gonna stamp this into my outer corner area and slowly bring it up into my crease because I think that's gonna kind of be our crease shade. So far, it does have a little bit of kick up in the pan. Hmm. I feel like it's going on just a bit patchy compared to, I don't know, even the, the Haute Couture collection from Rosalia that I filmed with a few days ago. Still had a smoother, but those mattes were different. They were like very creamy. Um, this one's not feeling as creamy. I mean, the pigment's there, but I feel like it's just taking a lot more work, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's just get that on there. I'm just gonna spend some time bluff, uh, bluffing. Why am I gonna bluff? Blend, <laughs> buffing, you know. That's a new thing, okay? We're just gonna spend some time bluffing because we're gonna blend and buff this out. So let's go ahead and speed this up and bluff. Okay, using the same brush, I am gonna go into this deeper purple here. And we're just gonna take that just on this outer corner. That's really, really dark. I like that. Very deep, very beautiful. Just gonna wipe that off a little go back into the original purple that we had the brighter one and I just want to put some more back into the crease and try to blend it up so that we don't lose that purple no fallout so far so that's a good sign this purple is just I think it's this purple actually this particular tone and you guys know that purples are a lot more hard to produce in a way that they're really blendable. I would say my favorite purple shadows so far have been the Blend Bunny Blends palette purples. Those are ugh, something else, they're amazing. And just back in with a little bit more of the darker purple. I feel like I just need to bring it out here a little to match it with the other eye. There we go. So that's how that's looking so far. I'm just cleaning off the same brush because I really do love this brush. Actually, do I wanna go in with a bit of a smaller one? I think so. I'm gonna take actually a rougher brush. I'm just gonna clean it off. There is some staining on it, but I'm taking the number 14, which is just like a really skinny um, blending brush. And I think I wanna go into this shade here. It is more of a like a frost or a satin, if you can tell right there. It's gonna keep focusing on my face, but there. So it's a bit of a weird shade, but I think we can work that into our crease. I don't mind a little shimmer in the crease. Okay, that's got a lot of kick up. So I'm just touching some on and then I'm wiping it off on my towel so that I don't get like a lot. But I'm gonna start buffing that into this area here, like just very faintly. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a sheen to it, but definitely very, very satin shade. But it's really pretty. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I'm really excited to play with one of the Dazzle shadows because I think it's going to be really, really gorgeous. I don't know if this was the <laughs> top to wear with this whole look because I thought I was going to be doing something probably completely different. 
little more elegant, you know? Okay, so I'm just taking little touches of that pink. I thought it was gonna be more like a cranberry shade, but it's actually more pink. So just taking little touches, blending it into that purple. And then on the same brush, I think I might take that bright purple that we started out with, just a touch of it. I'm gonna see if I can buff that out into this little area here, just to soften. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm just cleaning that off in case I want that brush again. So that is what we're looking like so far. And I think I'm quite enjoying it. Okay, next I'm gonna take this like pencil brush. It's from BK Beauty, it's a 207. I think that we're gonna go into the navy a little bit. Actually, hang on. I'm not gonna take it on that brush. I'm gonna use this Unit 127 brush. It's just like a flat shader. I'm gonna go into the navy shade on this brush. And I just wanna stamp this very close to the outer corner lash line. And just match it with that upper line. Okay, so there's that one. Now I'm gonna take the BK207 brush. I'm gonna go into this uh, teal color. So we just used that navy. I'm gonna go into this teal color. And I'm just gonna buff out right over that. That's really pretty. I like that color. I think this is one of the Velux pearls, which I cannot understand why it's a pearl, but maybe it's supposed to be, you know, like in the Tati Beauty palette, there's those like satin, or no, not satin, sequin shades. I wonder if that's what they mean when they say Velux pearl, because that's kind of what they look like. So there's that shade. And then on the same BK207 brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of this dark green shade and we're just gonna pop that into the center portion into the teal because I just want that to kind of look more green. It looks really dark on camera. I feel like hopefully it translates um, differently when I have it on my actual, um, you know, viewfinder. Okay, so next, I don't know what I wanna do on the lid, you guys. So, hmm, I feel like I kinda wanna go with this peachy dazzle shadow on the lid, but I think I want something first to blend out that portion. So I think I'm gonna use Okay, I'm gonna use this brush from Nabla. It's just a flat shader, it's the N103. I think that I'm gonna go in with, yeah, I think I'm gonna go in with this purple shade. It's got some pink shimmer to it. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is, but we're gonna try that. These really do like kick back up quite a bit. So I'm just touching it off on my towel. But I'm gonna put some of that here. And I think I'm going to kind of angle it like that. So, I don't know. This doesn't really... I'm going to grab a little pink because um, I got this a little too far. I'm just going to blend that over. I'll do that after properly. But I don't know if you can tell. There's not really much like shimmer to it. It's definitely very, very satin. So, again, on like a bit of an angle. Oh, I got some fallout. I don't know if you can see, I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush. Okay, that did stain just a teeny bit, but I'm just going over with the brush that I use my concealer and foundation. And I do have some on this side too. Okay, that picked up a lot better, so. Anyways, be careful, tap off your brush, clean it off, you know all those things. I think that for the um, Dazzle Shadow, I wanna try and use glitter glue. So I'm gonna use my NYX glitter glue. Guys, my brushes are so dirty. I'm just taking a flat shader from BH Cosmetics. It was like a travel set, cause <laughs> I guess I don't have any flat shader brushes I can use right now, somehow. They've all just kind of, you know, 
disappeared. So I'm gonna put this just on, I'm gonna take some off of the side and put it here, just on this inner portion. Okay, so got the glitter glue on. Now, I think I'm gonna go in with this Dazzle Shadow right here. It's kind of like pink and sparkly. So we're gonna go in with that, like a peachy pink. It's like a peach pink. And I'm just gonna pop that. Oh yeah, these will have a lot of fallout if you don't use a glitter glue. I've never used the Dazzle Shadows before. This is actually my first time playing with them, but. That's really beautiful though. I like that shade. Okay, I'm not mad at that. I wish there was more colorful um, shades like this, the Dazzle Shadow, like if they had some pretty like blues and things, that would have been really fun. I feel like this is looking very similar to the NARS look that I created, like with the inner corner being like that, or the inner lid being like that. Um, I am also gonna grab a pencil brush. And I'm gonna go in with this middle uh, shimmer here. I think that's also a dazzle shadow. It looks super sparkly. I'm actually gonna wet this just with some setting spray. And we're just gonna pop that in our inner corner. It's very like white. Is that for? Yeah, showing up just very bright white. I'm just kind of blending that upwards a little. I feel like that just kind of opened up my eyes. Just a smidge. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I am going to take a little bit more of that pink shade that we used up in the crease here and I just want to do a little bit of refining because I feel like it just got a little bit lost. There we go. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that original purple on this brush and same thing, blend that back into the pink there. Perfect. Okay, so top it is done. I do wanna finish off the bottom by putting more color there. And my eye has really been going to this bright blue and I think it's more of a frost shade but I do want to use it so I'm gonna grab one of these like flat shader type of brushes and I'm gonna grab that on my brush I'm just gonna tap off a little bit in case there's fallout it is kind of a dusty shade and we're just gonna pop that right here because I really wanted to see how the colors do in this you know like Neutrals we can do any which way, but really just wanted to see how the colors worked out. That's a really beautiful pop of blue. It's really pretty. I do have some sparkle fall out from the Dazzle Shadows, but I mean, that's fine. I feel like that's kind of bound to happen, but um, I'm just gonna go off camera finish my brows, put on some mascara and some lower lash liner, and I will be back to discuss my thoughts about this palette. All right, you guys, so before I zoom you back out, I thought I would give you a look at the final look with mascara and liner on. For the eyeliner, I actually used this one from LA Girl. It's their Glide Gel Liner. The shade that I have is a silver. It's just called Silver Streak, so um, it's just like a basic silver eyeliner. I just thought that in the uh, lower lash line with like the blues and purples and it just kind of pops a little more holiday. I kind of wanted to make this look like a holiday look. Like this would be so fun for like New Year's, but um, <clears throat> we're gonna talk about this. I'm gonna zoom you guys out a little bit and yeah, let's discuss. All right, so is this worth the price? <laughs> You guys, this is a really, really expensive um, holiday palette. So I would say get it on a discount if you really, really do want it. While I enjoy the eyeshadows that I did use, I don't know about all of the other ones because I haven't tried them on the eyes yet, but um, just from like swatching and dipping my brush into some of the shadows, I can just see that they're really, really powdery. They're just very, very powdery, very similarly to the Botanic Panic formula, which I really do enjoy, like the mattes and a lot of the satins that are in here. 
and actually even the Velux pearls I do just tend to use as like matte shadows. I'm really happy that they included the Dazzle shadows in here because for the Botanic Panic, I, I know this is like a weird comparison to do, but I just feel like with the Botanic Panic, it was really missing that extra pop of shimmer. And I like that I can put something over the lid and in the inner corner to really highlight that shimmer. I used one of the lighter shimmers in my brow bone, um, which I don't think I told you which one I used. Oh my God, see, I cannot open this palette. That's my one big struggle. I really wish they had a little um, separating tab here because I feel like it just makes it difficult. <laughs> So I used the shade here. I don't know what it's called, but it's just kind of a, it's a really satin shimmer. Reminds me of like nylon and those type of shades um, from their like original line. I don't know. I was actually talking to Millie about this because Millie also picked this up and I, I know she didn't enjoy it at all compared to me. I think I enjoyed it a little bit more, but also I think our makeup preferences are slightly different. But we did agree on one thing and that's that the formula is quite powdery. So I actually went back just before I popped back on camera to check and see if I had the same issue with the Botanic Panic because I kind of couldn't remember. And I'm just dipping my brush into stuff and I do find that I am having that issue with some of these shadows too. So, and the only ones that I feel like I don't have it with are like those Velux pearls. And I feel like that's probably the similar ones in this palette that didn't give me as much kick up either. But the shimmers and the mattes, have a lot of um, kick up and just dusting and and they're just kind of chunky when you apply them. As for the Dazzle shadows, I don't know if this goes for their regular line, but they are very, very sparkly, but you definitely need to lay down a glitter glue or use a wet brush, otherwise they're gonna be everywhere. Even then, I still have so much fallout down here and down here. So, I mean, while I do enjoy the eye look that I created, while I enjoy the colors that are in here, do I think that this is worth the price of what it is? No, because I feel like you can get something way better from Indie. Um, but I mean, if you really are a lover of MAC like I am and you, you know, like to try out their stuff and you've played with their formula and know what their formula is like in the past, I think that you might still enjoy it. Uh, um, if you think this is gonna be anything like the Tempting Fate um, palette, no. <laughs> uh, but you also have to note that that formula was made in Italy, whereas these formulas are made in Canada and the USA. So the materials are obviously gonna be a little bit different. I did also notice um, just by looking at the back of the packaging that all of the shadows, um, so the Dazzle shadows actually don't, I don't think they contain talc because I did look through just to see and I don't see it and the first ingredient is dimethicone and I guess that's to hold the sparkles together um but I was looking at the U.S. formulas which is everything else in the palette which is the mattes the frost um the satins and the velux pearls and it seems like those all do contain uh talc as their first ingredient so that probably explains why um they are super powdery and kick up -y and you know just not as high quality feeling i guess you could say is what i'm trying to say there um i don't know if that's the case with the regular um formula because i can't remember i mean i haven't bought their single shadows in a very very long time i just have the ones that i do have from when i have bought them so i'm not really really sure about that but oh my god my mirror has been in frame we're just gonna push that out because that's annoying I'm sorry uh, hopefully that didn't annoy you guys too much uh but besides that I really just don't think that this is worth the price point if you're wondering if you should get this as a gift for someone I would say instead of this maybe try getting your hands on the tempting fate palette because I feel like that would make a much better gift something someone can actually use um you know but if you have a makeup lover in your life that wants a palette with a ton of color I mean this might be a good option um but at the same time you know it's just a lot of you know <laughs> i don't know it, there's small pans it's a high price point so i would say that if you can score it on a discount do that maybe wait and see if it comes to sephora and buy it on their vib sale or see if it hits up i don't know does ulta carry mac i'm not really sure but you know nordstrom does if you can get it on sale or with points or whatever it might be more worth getting than paying full price because 
I don't think that if I was a regular consumer that I would have paid regular price for this. Um, but because I bought it for YouTube and I mean, if it was a regular consumer and not doing YouTube, I probably wouldn't have purchased this at all, but I really did want to play with this and review it for you guys because Mac was one of the first brands I ever, ever, ever tried. And I love Mac. I love their holiday releases. I'm actually wearing the Nutcracker highlighter and blush today on my cheeks as well. And I really, really love this one. It's this one here, the kind of terracotta blush. I just, oh, it's so beautiful. I do love that. Um, I will say the mattes in, the matte formula that they did in the Rosalia palette, for some reason, I really like that matte formula uh, better than this matte formula, but my favorite matte formula obviously was the one in the Tempting Fate, but that is not a regular formula that they have in their line, so you have to also think about that too. So I am also wondering if they were just testing the market with you know, that um, matte formula in their Tempting Fate palette, and maybe they'll come out with more. So do I think MAC is making a comeback? I do really think so. I think that they're really trying. They're actually giving us interesting things that, you know, we want to see because we've been seeing color from indie and all these brands, and we're like, why does MAC keep releasing the same boring stuff in different packaging over and over again? And I finally think that they're doing it. They're giving us something a little bit different, but I will say they're kind of steeping the price point a bit too. So I'm not sure that, um, you know, that's my favorite thing about it. So those are my thoughts about this. I hope that if you did pick this up, that you do enjoy it and do love it. And you know, if you didn't, then see if you can return it. I don't know. Um, I'm going to be keeping mine for now. I do want to play with it a little bit more because I haven't hated the formula. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to play with it a little bit more. And if you guys want to, you know, know more about this palette, let me know. I can do a video. Um, I am planning to do a video, hopefully uh, at the beginning of November, kind of just talking about all of the products that I did try in the month of October and telling you what I've really been loving, what I haven't been loving. It'll mainly just focus on the products that I've purchased during the month of October so anything I have bought this month or probably even in the tail end of September is when I'll talk about those products so if you're interested in seeing that leave me a thumbs up below let me know in the comments down below I would really really appreciate it if you didn't enjoy this video or you absolutely hate this palette you can thumbs down the video and if you haven't already I would really appreciate if you subscribed and joined our little family here on YouTube I would love for you to stick around but that's all for this video I hope that you are all staying safe being healthy and being kind and I will see you in the next one until then love you bye